This may be controversial, what I'm okay. about to say, but I think that the only difference between me or just any independent artist compared to Dua Lipa or Lizzo, oh, okay, got it, got it. Lizzo got it. or uh, just, you know, any, like, those kinds of artists is not the talent, it's the budget. Yeah. And that's what the majors give you. Woo! All right, everybody. Sorry, I do a little Ric Flair woo. Shout out to Ric Flair. This is your boy, My Wand, here at Dash Radio, of course, on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Today, we have an incredibly talented, this exclam like all caps, underlined, bolded, talented uh, artist today that I'm very excited to talk to, Tiana Cocker. How are you doing? Did I say it wrong? I did, huh? <laughs> Culture. No, I said it after we just went over. We just went over no, this. No, you see, it's because I said that last. I know. I said it. I said it that way last. Wait, wait you said Munich is spelled so ick. Coker. Coker, and I yeah, said Cocker. Yeah, I said Cocker because He's, I said that last. I am the worst, and I'm not even gonna redo this. This is gonna be so people this know. Is, yeah. Say it right, Coker. Coker. Like Coca-Cola, Coke. Literally. That's why I'm gonna think of it like Coke. I, I hate to re mm -hmm. relate you to a, a class one drug, but that's fine. Tiana Coker, I am so sorry about no, that. No, don't even. Because I have, that's I fine. Am, I get to do this like three times a week. Just talk to like different, you know, pop artists, R and B artists, rappers. Mm -hmm. Might be a country singer, and I'd say once a week or once every other week, I actually like thank the person who set the interview up because I end up discovering an artist that I've seen your name around. But I never fully dove in. I never fully. I'm. 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 I'm, I'm going to say it again to make sure I say it right. Tiana. Coker. Mm -hmm. Coker. I use mm -hmm. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I never fully dived into your album. Mm -hmm. You know, self-titled Tiana Coker. Yep. And the seven. It's just like a seven-song journey, right? Seven songs. If I'm it is. Correct. It's literally like a story from top to bottom. It's so beautifully done. Thank so the you. first thing that said to me, I was like, she, either you help or you work with writers or you write your music like this I, sounds like introspective i do write i also like to co-write because i just think that collaboration always just brings out such always. a wonderful yeah like product absolutely because that's never going to be replicated yeah true. those same people are never going to be in the same room at the same time ever again that's very true actually yeah mm -hmm. like that exact kind of combination of mm -hmm. energy well i got you know i was listening to that i was listening to back it up Blue and green touch my soul and such like a, it just felt so warm. Thank you. I, I wanted to make that one very poetic because uh, that was like straight up about my ex-boyfriend. Oh, that's like direct. Like if he listens to it. Oh, absolutely. Because he has blue eyes. I have green eyes. Uh, I was going to ask what the origin of that came from. Okay. Yeah. And I also just like mentioned like the colors just all throughout the song. Yeah. Too. Yeah. But that's like literally what it was about. Wow, wow. Yeah. Did he reach out to you after he heard uh, it? Oh, no, no, he's blocked. <laughs> oh, it ended bad. I got to listen bit. to the lyrics again. A little bit, a little okay. bit, a little well, bit. Well, that's one of the most interesting things about dating a singer. I've never dated a singer, but like other examples I know is like a girl named Charlotte Sands. She writes a lot of her music, or like Bryn Elliott, the younger artist, that everything they write is about breakups. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's... As a guy dating a singer, I almost think you have a job to break the singer's heart for the listener's sake. You know what, low key, like I kind of manifested that because last, Blue and Green was released last year. So when I wrote it, maybe like a few months before it, I tweeted something and I was like, I need my heart to be broken so I can write music again. And then when we broke up, like, I was scrolling through my Twitter with my good friend, and then I was like, oh my gosh, look at this tweet. It was that tweet, and she was like, you literally called manifested it. Like, it. You manifested it. You think he saw the tweet and was like, oh, I'm gonna fuck her heart up. I'm not sure, because, I don't know, that relationship, it was so quick, and then it just, like, ended. Mm. Can I say something very selfish? Please. I'm very glad it ended the way however it did. No, and I hope absolutely. it wasn't too bad. Because I love the record. It wasn't. It wasn't too bad. You know, I, I, it was like, looking back at it, I'm glad it happened to me because it really put me in such a good place for myself, to put mm. myself first. 
Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's really introspective. A lot I have heard very few people say they were glad a breakup happened. I really am very, very glad it happened. Now, the rest of your music, is this all, it, it seems like you write from life experience. I do. Even I do. like same lame, right? Same lame, yep. <laughs> <laughs> is that about same dude? No, different guy. Oh, okay, different so, guy. So some of these records, I actually don't release it like in order. Yeah. So same lame, I actually recorded in 2018, but oh. I didn't release it till last year. Yeah, yeah. So that's like a whole three years after. Yeah. Um, so I was living in the UK prior to moving here. Uh-huh. Um, back there, I had a boyfriend of over two years, like, you know, pretty, pretty serious, pretty long. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we obviously ended things when I moved because I'm, I haven't been back there since I moved. It wasn't going to work out. Yeah, yeah. Among other well, things. Well, you needed to be here, though. Among other things, yeah. you know, that he did. <laughs> I actually caught him snooping on my Instagram last night. Oh, <laughs> same lame was snooping. He sure was. And I was like, oh, haven't seen this name in a while. Block again. Hey, that is, that is bold of him to do that. It I, really I would have was. used a burner. It really was. Cause he I, wanted you to know. He did. Yeah. He did. And I normally don't check who watches my stories because that's a lot of people. But for some unknown reason, I did. You're like, you had the feeling. Yeah. And I've I, caught that too. Yeah. I caught a burner account watching my shit, and then I had, I messaged a burner account as if it was her, and it addressed me, and then realized it was on the burner. She thought she was replying on her actual See? IG. See? It worked. But, but yeah, it's, I do write from experience, but surprisingly, a lot of the songs I write about, yes, there's, they're mostly about relationships, but a lot of them are also about people I've worked with. Mm. Or like friendships. So it's not necessarily just love. No. Got no, no, no. it. No, no, no. Like, don't trip was straight up about like someone I used to work with. Tripping. Straight <laughs> tripping. Like, well, we gotta get into your journey before we before we keep diving into the music. You mm-hmm. have a really beautiful journey that that spans you know across the world. Mm-hmm. So I've always said, and I should have known, if I didn't know what your background was, but if I knew that you were from that part of the world, I would have known you're Filipino for sure. Because Filipinos have all the sauce, all the swag. Thank you. You're the first person to say that. What? Artistically, creatively, because Filipinos have the swag. It's, thank you. I agree, 100%. But every day, every day, obviously living here in LA, are you Mexican? Oh, yeah, people are going to assume that. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. that's what they think I am. Yeah, I mean, Filipinos have a lot of Spanish roots, too. Oh, yeah, I so mean, we were colonized by Spain for 333 yeah, yeah. years. Absolutely, but you know? my mom is half Spanish. There we go. So, so. you know, they're, they're 25% correct. I yeah. Yes, kind of. A little bit. It's but I, I did do my ancestry DNA, and I do have, like, 2% Mexican blood. Oh, they were right. So now, now we're at 27%. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But, but you have done a Spanish song. Mm-hmm. You, you did the Spanish I did. Record. I do like to tap into all my different roots. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, you know, that, especially early on in my career, I was very, very heavy with the experimenting mm-hmm. and dipping my toes in different things because, I, you know, I was like, what's going to work? I just want to, I have all the time in the world to try it out. It was like early pandemic. This was like mm-hmm. May 2020. So I was like, you know what? Let's see if this is going to click. And I ended up getting a really, really big Latin audience yeah. from that record. Yeah. They, you know, well, one, the record's great. Thank like you. anyone who heard it was just moving and grooving, Thank you. you know? But the, the, the Latin community loves their music way more than Americans love our music. I don't know if that makes sense. Absolutely. I mean, Bad Bunny is like the most streamed artist. Yeah, and Bad, the, the amount of love that he gets in his hometown, yeah. like no one in America is going to get Literally. that Literally. I mean, his like tour sold out. Yeah, for sure. His shit sold out here. I remember yeah. he. I remember someone told me they paid like up to anyway, like $1,000 to go yep. see Bad Bunny. And I'm like, holy yep. shit. You know what, though? You know what? I, I, not that I ever hated on Bad Bunny, but my girl put me on something. She told me to watch one of his videos with English captions. And so I watched one of his most popular songs that I've heard a gazillion times. I can't think of what the name is, but, and it was so beautifully written. Mm-hmm. The actual words it's were actually, fucking amazing. Yeah. Like, 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 literally, he was talking about the girl, like, falling in love with the wrong stuff and, like, comparing him to a drug or something. Mm-hmm. And I just was like, bro, if I would have known this it's was what I was saying, yeah. It actually is. But same with you. You're, 
back to you. This is all Tiana. <laughs> Tiana Coker. I've been saying it in my head. Coker. Um, I got to give you a gift. So I do something where I give every artist an album from my CD collection. So it's actually hidden under you. If you want to read trick right under here, you should to your left. To your left. I wanted to give you Brandy's debut album. That You know what? Even the cover reminded me of your swag. Thank you. This is the one with... Um, I want to be, be down, down yep. for with you. Yep. Yep. And you know, your, your debut album was self-titled. Mm -hmm. So it was Brandy's. So also was on a white background. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of your pictures have that 90s aesthetic to yeah i mean that's what i grew up listening to i mean i listen to everything like i was actually having a conversation last night uh with a with a friend about how i listen to everything except for screamo yeah i, I feel that i don't listen to that but like if you put my you know spotify on shuffle like you'll be listening to classical you know yeah uh, and then and then rock and yeah. then country and then musical theater um but my heart like, there's a special place in my heart for 90s and early 2000s. I could tell. Even if you hadn't answered it in interviews, just listening. Even especially your project, listening to everything. I'm like, oh, she's a 90s R&B kid. Like, your list of inspiration are the people that you always list when asked. I love it. This is, like, literally what I listen to. Mm -hmm. you, one of the few people who mentions SWV. Oh, my god! And you mentioned them one time. One of your interviews, you made it a point where they wrote out Sisters with Voices. Like, Absolutely. You love SWV. And I, you don't hear I, that mentioned I love, I, I love them. Like, I, I'm, I'm a big Survivor girl. Do you watch Survivor? I thought you were talking Destiny Child Survivor. Oh, the show. no. Like, the I've show Survivor. It. I'm not big on it. Okay. Well, it. Taj... From SWV, like, did Survivor. Like, oh. she did the Brazilian season. Like, no, like, I love that. I SWV. didn't know that. No, like, I, I, I love them. Were you a, are you a big Survivor fan because of her going on? No, I just love okay. Survivor, okay. period. So I'm this so, was the best thing I'm, ever. SWV. I'm so convinced that I can win that show. <laughs> I really am. For some really? weird unknown reason, I'm like, yeah, I can do 40 you, days. You probably could because that, that, that show is mostly, like, politics, like, that and also, you know, I was born in an island. You know, I, I can swim. Well, let's, let's talk about being born on the island. So yeah. How, how are you, in the, you know, not to, like, knock how, how much of our culture is in the Philippines, uh -huh. but were you listening to, you know, this 90s R&B while you were there? I in was, Manila? yeah. So uh, my parents, um, I do come from a musical family. Uh, my my grandmother, she was a classical opera singer. I didn't um, know that, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, my brother was in a band uh, back home that was actually quite popular. Um, really, just, in you know, the arts Philippines. was encouraged. Yes, mm -hmm. arts was definitely encouraged. And um, my my dad, in particular, always had music playing. Um, whether he was like downstairs by the bar, having a drink, or uh, in his room. Um, but every time we'd be in the car, that's when my mom would be playing music. Mm. So my mom had, technically back then it was CDs, yep. you know, but so at home it was dad's music and the car it was always mom's music. And my mom always had R&B playing uh, or soul. Okay. And a little bit of disco. <laughs> I love disco. It's my favorite. So, song. so my love for R and B was influenced by my mom for sure. Yeah. My dad was a big rock, uh, soul, country kind of dude. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so your family supported the music so much so that I think even before Cambridge, you were in some kind of art school or no? Am I wrong? I wasn't. I wasn't. Oh, sorry, I was sorry. just in like a normal high school, but I was very involved with the arts. Okay. In that high school, so I was in every production, you know, Choir, every, I did, I was in the dance team, I was co-captain, I was in their, so my school had this thing called APAC, which is called Asia Pacific, which is short for, sorry, Asia Pacific Activities Conference, so it's basically okay. a bunch of like, uh, international schools around Asia, it's like the Olympics, you know, every year, oh, like we meet in arts. one school, right. um, and so there's like, uh, there's the dance team, and then there's also uh, an acting uh, conference that we do, and there's also choir and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I did all that, and every like musical my school would put 
I would do that. Yeah. It was just, yeah. It was in there. So your mama yeah. knew. Because when, when you went, so you go from Manila to England to mm-hmm. attend Cambridge. Mm-hmm. Was that for music? Were you doing Musical like theater. Wow. Yeah, so singing, dancing, acting. So I did a two-year course out there. That means you were really good at, I mean, I know you're great at singing. Actually, I know you're great at dancing. I watch your videos. You know what? I, like, all of my teachers in, in, in the UK, they would all agree that my acting is actually better than my singing. Oh, holy shit. You must be a phenomenal actress then. Wow. Yeah. So you got in, because you can't just, like, apply to Cambridge and attend the school for the arts. No, like, I I had to, like, make, like, a reel, and then I had to basically put together, like, a resume of, like, everything that I've done, you know, outside of school. It was a lot. Yeah, and you got admitted. Like, uh, I had to, like, write a, like, an essay, you know, to get in and stuff like that. So the reason I bring it up is because... I want people to understand that that's not an easy like feat. You mm-hmm. already accomplished one feat in getting accepted to Cambridge. Mm-hmm. Now, when you when you got done with that, you you came here to LA. Yes, but I actually had I I had no intentions on moving to LA. Oh. oh. Because, like I said, back there I had a boyfriend. Same way. And I really enjoyed living there at the time. You know, I got very comfortable. Um, I was like, you know, this is fun. Like, I, I wouldn't mind, like, living here. So, you know, after the two years was up, I was, like, highly considering going to another school for, like, master's, essentially, um, or just, like, auditioning all throughout the West End and stuff like that. But one spring break, I ended up going home to my mom because the weather in the U.K. sucks. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to spend spring break in, like, rainy weather. Exactly. So I went home, and we went to the beach, and... <laughs> At that beach, there was just, like, literally a guy, like, by the water with, like, a guitar, like, just jamming. And so my mom was like, go sing with him. And I was like, okay. Uh, So I went up to him and I was like, hey, hey, man, like, (laughs) do you know the chords to put your records on by Karine Bailey Ray? You know Mm -hmm. that song? And he goes, yeah, yeah, for sure. He just knew it? He did, yeah. That's not an easy one that any guitarist would just know. Yeah, so... We started jamming, I started singing, and my mom, you know, typical mom, she took a video. Uh-huh. You know, she was like... Of course. Being, like, the mean girl's mom, you know? Yeah, yeah, proud. <laughs> um, and then she posted it to Facebook. And then from there, uh, it got it went kind of, like, semi-viral. And, like, a producer out here saw it and was like, hey, like, mm. I think she should come here. Get the fuck out of here That's from your literally, mom's Facebook video. That's literally how it happened. And so... And so I ended up coming here, and I fell in love. I mean, I grew up coming here. My dad's from San Diego. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like, okay, okay. So you've been so, here before. You yeah, have some roots Yeah, here. like every okay. every summer we'd come here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Girl, I was about to be like, you were just like, fuck it. I went semi-viral. I'm, I'm going to LA. So I, I've been to LA, you okay. know, but at the time I was set on London. Mm-hmm. So from Cambridge, I was going to go, go to London. Um but then yeah that happened i ended up coming here i spent a whole summer here recording demos and i was like i don't want to leave yeah and then i just stayed you've been here ever since mm-hmm. wow well we got to shout out your moms yeah we have to shout out your mother yeah. do i say <laughs> mama coker or no just katrina katrina <laughs> shout out to you <laughs> shout out to all the mothers out there but specifically katrina because yeah. I imagine you were probably like, Mom, don't film this shit. Or, Mom, I really, we gonna put no, it on Facebook? I, I definitely was like, you know, I was like home and I just wanted to relax and I didn't really want to like, you know, sing, but she made me. And that's the thing, like, you know, you grow up and you're, every kid is going to have that phase where they just like, are like, ugh, about anything their parents do, right? Mm-hmm. But if there's one thing about moms is that they always know. Always. They always know. Like, e- there have there has been times where I've like tried to lie to my mom, and she's just like, yeah, they know, laughing because yeah. they know they always. moms know, dads don't. No, definitely, dads don't know. Dads much. are clueless. Yeah, yeah. yeah moms yeah. know. Yeah. No, moms know everything. Like even like, if I'm if I'm like it's a certain time of the year and I'm I'm not doing well financially, mm-hmm. my mom can just tell by the way like I pick up the phone. 
She'd be like, hi. I'm like, hey, mom, how are you? She's like, oh, what's wrong? You're not doing good with money? And I'm like, how the fuck do you know? Or mm-hmm. she just say anything. The other day, we couldn't find the remote. Mm-hmm. Of course. Mm-hmm. So mothers know. Mm-hmm. Shout out Katrina, because that is amazing. Mm-hmm. That is that is awesome. So now, fast forward, you come out here to L.A. Yeah. But you weren't signed or anything, right? I was distributed through Universal for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah, but then eh, that nothing really happened with that. Um, like, I only ended up doing one song with them in a year, and I was like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. That's, you know, I want to keep keep the yeah. momentum going. So I, I ended up leaving. It was Everything was fine. Um, but, yeah, f- independent. That's amazing, because mm-hmm. just surviving in L.A., mm-hmm. in any field, whether you want to, like, you know, sell food, start a restaurant, do anything is tough, let alone arts. Probably the most competitive field in this city. And you've been here for how many? So when, I didn't get a, like a, a gauge on when this was. When did you move here? I realize? moved here officially June of 2018. Okay, so yeah, so you, you, you've been here now. But I did go home for a year during the pandemic. Ah, oh, mm-hmm. Manila? Mm-hmm. Okay. And is that, was that d- during that time when you did the ASAP Rocky show? No, no, no. It was, that was 2019. I moved home mid-March of 2020 to first week of April 2021. Okay. So when yeah. you were when you did the show in Manila, mm-hmm. was your family not freaking the fuck out? They weren't. What? They weren't because my mom was just like Katrina. What? Come on. No, because you know she's like. My mom honestly hates going out. Oh, okay. That, <laughs> and that and explains like it. the the way that club was set up was like there were no seats uh, unless you had like a table and like the tables were all already like bought you yeah, know yeah so she was like in the middle like mm. cramped at and, an like, asap show too and like yeah that's a rowdy crowd very rowdy it, no it is like literally somebody like stole his shoe off his foot while performing <laughs> that night i'm not even kidding and he never got it back like he they, did though he okay. did though and that guy got kicked out wow um they be stealing people's sho- shoes in the li- yeah oh wow he probably thought he could have like sold it or something for sure if you, but what half of asaps you know she, she I, I know she's proud of me of course, of but course. I, I also know she's probably in her head she's like i can get this show at home because we have a karaoke machine at home <laughs> and she's seen it so many times absolutely i just figured all your childhood friends people you grew up with family members was like full circle like you're performing most of my friends are actually like not in manila oh okay a lot of them also like moved Mm. out of Manila and when I went to high school there I had like a big falling out with my best friends Mm. just because they all ganged up on me Uh, I was bullied I was bullied who's laughing now I know who is laughing now so I I did have my best friend there though that was nice and and my family and some cousins as well Um, but most of my friends you know are, are all here yeah, yeah, okay. Well, and, or in the UK, I, I'm still very close to my friends okay. out there. Okay, have you gone back there since? since? I haven't. Oh, you haven't. You I said haven't. That. You said no, that. but I um, I I want to. So I'm going to Spain for a week. Okay. Uh, in August, Ooh. and my return flight just so happens to be connecting in Heathrow. Shout out. Get but, a little layover. I know. So I'm like, should I just? I don't know where I'm going to be out in Europe next. Should I just do two nights in London? Why not? I might. Now, I if you might. do happen to spend two nights in London, are you going to see the same lame or no? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not? No. Was, there, was that breakup have to do with anything with you leaving the UK? Just curious. Or you were going to leave no matter what? I, I was going to leave no matter what, okay. but he actually cheated on me. Uh, he cheated on me, and then I, I took him back. So, so leaving him, like, it wasn't that difficult. Not at all, yeah. It really wasn't. You know what I always like to think about, because I've been cheated on. I think most good people have been cheated Absolutely. on. Absolutely. I actually think it's like, God's you know, You know, like, us. the nice guys finish last yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Also, girls, it's also girls. Absolutely. Girls. Like, good girls finish last, Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. And I think, I remember, like, fast forward after it happened to me, thinking, like, oh, that was God, like, giving throwing the red flag in my face. Like, I have no other way to do this. I've thrown it to you in every other way. You got to get you. I am a firm believer 
That rejection is God's protection. Ooh, what a bar. Rejection is God's mm-hmm. protection. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. Even in music, right? Yeah. The amount of no's I've gotten for yes, like, and then, like, all of a sudden you hear, like, down the line, like, oh, this person did that and that and that, or you see, like, an article about that person, and, like, that's why. Yep. That's literally why. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we got to talk about your journey now because you've, you dropped your debut album in mm-hmm. 2020, mm-hmm. No, November of 2020. Mm-hmm. And since then, you've, you've given us, you know, incredible singles. Thank but you. I'm sure people have been asking, mm-hmm. 2022, mm-hmm. are you building towards a follow-up project? Or are you just going to keep going the single route? I have a collection of songs ready. Okay. But I just, I just know something is going to happen for me to be inspired again mm. and to write better music. You don't feel inspired right now. No, I do. Okay, I was going to say, gentlemen, we need to break some hearts. I do, I do, but I just know that something is going to happen for me to write about that inspires me and that can also inspire more people. Okay. Sounds like you're still waiting to get a couple more songs. I am. That yeah, I, I have enough but i just it's not gonna hurt to have more absolutely and there's no rush like it two years between the album is very normal if Mm -hmm. not four years five years Mm -hmm. so it's it's just exciting for me as a fan because i just recently became like a big fan of your music (laughs) that i know you got a new single you got Mm -hmm. coming out on the 29th yep can we know anything about this yeah it's called up to you uh it's produced by laney stewart Okay. Uh, Lady Stewart, can I assume it's a female producer? No, Lainey Stewart is uh, Tricky Stewart's brother. Oh, I thought you said Lady. Oh, sorry, Lainey. Lainey. Damn, Tricky. A, I didn't know Tricky Stewart has a brother. Yeah. B, his brother's producing too. Oh, my gosh. I mean, they, uh, like, he also worked on, like, a bunch of, like, the, uh, the, like, the Bieber stuff? stuff. Yeah, like, oh, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, single ladies, all that. So you got mm-hmm. something coming out in that little dream pocket. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Real central. It's- it's you know what's so interesting is that when we made this record it came out i we this this record's been done since december early december of last year okay okay it's been done yeah. it's been done um but i was just waiting for the right time to finish it mm. i mean don't no, sorry to release it because of the way it sounds and so it wasn't like a winter record. It wasn't a spring record. It's a very summer record. Mm. And I called him, I want to say like a week ago or two weeks ago. And I was like, I was like, yo, dude, like, did you hear the Drake and Beyonce like releases? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, we're in like the right direction. Because oh, it's you got very, some dance in it? Yeah. Yes. Like, I don't think and I've heard it, you do a dance exactly. record Exactly, and this was done before all of that like came yeah, out. Yeah, so this is clear. You're not biting. Never mind. Honestly, never mind. You're not biting B. No, no. So like, I'm like, I'm excited for this to come out. I'm excited because I yeah. love that Beyonce song. Oh my gosh, you it's won't great. Break my soul. It's <laughs> great. I love, I love Robin the, S. So yeah, when, when I love B a good out. sample. I love a good so sample. Let, so you got, okay, the record is called Up To You. Mm-hmm. So Up To You, I know it's going to have R&B elements at a, you know, at a minimum. Absolutely. But it's going to be, it's in the house BPM. I am very excited. I love, I love soulful house music. Um, like, uh, I can't remember who did it, but Haley's I remember that it was like a big song and like Skrillex one of those guys but I love when a soulful singer goes at that house music BPM Mm -hmm. so this is going to be the first time you do a record at the speed really yeah because um uh, I keep forgetting the name of it the one with Sage Um, take over take over was like an outdoor kind of club record yeah but it wasn't at that BPM it was it was yeah Yeah. I've heard you do like the mustard kind of like that DJ mustard vibe like London on the track, exactly all that. Mm-hmm. But this is like this is different. It's very like Catronata snake hips. Wow! I'm yeah. Very very excited. I'm excited too. And so, do, what what was your inspiration to take a different route, or the song just happened organically? It literally just happened organically. Uh, so I mean, my my process is normally, 
he'll come in with a very like bare bones just like one beat. instrument something like that yeah like just so you can see like okay four bars for the verse and then like, just like so we see the structure right and then i normally top line over that right over it and then he'll add production uh-huh. mm-hmm. based on like the feel of like the lyrics and all that was it at that bpm already like you it went wasn't. into it aha uh-huh. it, it got sped it, up after mm-hmm. interesting and mm-hmm. so now that this has happened and you've made this you know this style of song and then drake and beyonce drop mm-hmm. you know like literally back to back if i'm correct it was on back to back days or it same was, day yeah i think beyonce dropped it on like a monday yeah i think drake knew what b was doing and was like cool i'm gonna get my bot anyway they dropped you're really close. Yeah. So do you think you're going to, um, are you going to wait to see the response of Up To You? Or are you like, I like this sound. I want to I wanna keep kind of creating. Um, I kind of know what my next single would be. But if people like this direction, I have a backup. Oh. Yeah. You already got some other ones. I do. I like that. Prepared. I like that. So you touch a lot of different genres. When I listened mm-hmm. to your your debut album, it was very like it was like I knew what it was. It was R and B, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, going forward, are you going to keep experimenting with more and more genres? Always. Cause, okay, because you've done Latin. Yeah. You've done pop. Yeah. You've done trap. Yeah. Now we got some house mm-hmm. coming. Mm-hmm. What are some other genres you want to touch that you maybe have? I yet? love rock. Rock. Absolutely love rock. What's like a rock song if it's playing in the car, windows are going up and volumes getting jammed? Oof. Anything ACDC? Oh, oh, you're like a rock head, like a monster's a rock. Like anything, <laughs> anything by 311, mm. uh, Guns N' Roses, um... Rolling Stones. Okay, like the, literally the golden age of rock. Oh my gosh, yeah. Because all the rock I love is from the 90s. Audio Slave, Nirvana. I love that stuff. Sublime. Yeah, I love all that oh, stuff. Oh, no, I love all that too. Like, I love like a, I also like a good like punk, like uh, Green Day, um, All American Rejects, Paramore. I love Linkin Park. Who doesn't? I <laughs> love you, Linkin Park. I still listen to the Jay-Z Linkin Park album mm-hmm. every week from top to bottom. Yeah. There's one drive where I'm like, fuck, it's a short album. I'm going to yell for the next 20 minutes. So so I would love to do a project, maybe like three, four songs, where it's all like live instruments. Have you already tried it yet? Not yet. Oh, wait, so you're saying like, not necessarily rock. You just want to do something analog. Yeah, yeah, or, or something like that's more like guitar heavy, yeah. you know. You yeah. would sound great on an analog record like all live instruments your voice would just sit as well with all yeah. the instruments yeah so so that's something that I definitely yeah, want to yeah honestly like I watched Thor last night because I went to the early screening the new one mm-hmm. don't spoil anything I, I will start crying I won't you ever seen a grown man cry okay I'm oh my tomorrow. gosh I just Good. have to say like I thought Ragnarok was great it's not better than Ragnarok no fucking don't tell me that I'm gonna lose my shit I love Ragnarok I have seen Ragnarok. 12, when I tell times. you, I there was like only one part of the movie where I stopped laughing. Wow, I can't wait for the Thor. Wait, what's this correlation? Why we because the soundtrack oh. was because you know how they had well, you, you saw it in the trailer like Guardians are in it. You've seen that. It's out. Yeah, I'm not yeah. spoiling I that. I don't, I don't watch movie trailers, but it's okay. Oh, you don't? That's yeah, okay. I don't no, I didn't watch it. I didn't. Okay. You know why? Doctor Strange, I gave away too much, and then Spider Man. The Spider Man trailer pissed me off because I'm like, why did you tell me yeah. the whole movie? They basically told us the whole movie, you know? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. They anyway, did. so there's a specific song that is kind of like underlying. The theme song was uh, Sweet Child of Mine. Oh, wow. And like, I was like, my friend was like, you were singing like the entire time. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, because I know all of these records. You know what? Movies do that now, <laughs> especially Marvel. But every good, oh every good movie is found out now. You have to have one song you're behind. The new mm-hmm. Batman. Something in the way I mean, that Nirvana. And- uh, the new Stranger Things. That that song by Kate Bush is now like. Yeah. 
I haven't even watched it, but I know what you're talking about because I saw because it of, charted. Because of that song? Like, yeah. that song's old. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the dude um, on TikTok with the ocean spray on the skateboard? Yeah. The, like, Fleetwood Mac? The... The mother- I had never heard Dreaming by Fleetwood Mac until that motherfucker did that. Wow. Yeah. So the power of that. But it, I'm telling you. are you going to jump back into acting at all? I do want to. we're talking about movies. I want to. As soon as I'm done with school, because I'm still in school. You're still in school? Yeah, so over the pandemic, <clears throat> I, I went back to school online okay. to get my music business degree. Wow. Yeah, so I'm at full sale right now. Did you not get your bachelor's at like, Cambridge? Uh, it's a, dropped? but that's like musical theater. Got it, so this is a whole different degree. So this is like music business. Good for you. Thank you. Um, so I finished in November. What's your inspiration behind going back to school? My mom was like, you have to. Oh, wow. <laughs> she was like, Get a business degree. Um, Shout out Katrina. Yeah. Like, and we, can't, we can't say she's No, wrong. because my mom's a businesswoman. Okay, okay. She is. Like, she is. Like, as much as my family, like, supports the arts, like, I come from a family of businesswomen and lawyers. I can see it because you move, like, not a lawyer, but you move like an executive. Like, like I grew executive. up going to my mom's board meetings oh, wow. after school. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so she's like, get a business degree. I like that. So that you'll you'll have it. Yeah. You know. Have you read the Donald Passman book yet? I had to for school. Oh, for for your yeah. class. See, yeah. I got that book because I wanted to go to USC's music industry program. Mm-hmm. After the second time they rejected me, fuck USC. My buddy who <laughs> just completed the program is like, dog, we fucking read from the same book for two years. He's like, fuck trying to get into the school. Just read that book. Yeah. So that to me, I bet, is that the textbook for your thing too? Um, well, we only used that book for one class. Oh, okay. Uh, but yes, we did have that as okay. one of our wow. resources. Wow. So mm-hmm. after school, you want to get back into acting? Yeah, so I'll have a little bit more time, you know, okay. um, because I still have roughly, like, I'm taking two classes this month. I, I have two quizzes. I have three assignments this No, it's week. work. Yeah, yeah. It's so, so once I have a little bit more free time, it is something that I do want to do because... Okay. I mean, I grew up acting, you know, yeah. I back home I was doing commercials and, you know, theater at a young age too, so. Well, yeah. speaking of acting, I have something I've been waiting to ask you and I feel like I've been looking for the right segue. I'm just gonna, you know, I like to cuss, I'm kind of like a little wild. How the fuck did you get Rob Schneider and Marlon Wayans to not just, these motherfuckers didn't do like a 90s cameo. You remember like back in the day in the videos? Right, these no, they had cameo. like a whole like scene. How did this happen? You gotta. Elaborate. I gotta give that to the directors. They they did all that. What do you mean? They just like called again. They dog? they knew them for some reason, and I was like, because I wanted like a whole Saved by the Bell thing. Um, I see that. I see but that. none of them were available. None of the actual. Oh, yeah. so you were trying to get the Saved by the. You were trying to get because Slater it was and- because it was like an eighties like theme yeah, right yeah. like 80s prom and then at the end we had the delorean yeah like so it was just like a whole 80s thing yeah. and so i was just like thinking of like iconic 80s characters you know that you would see in a school and mm-hmm. i was like say by the bell absolutely right so i was trying to get like the kids to be the teachers but none of them were available uh. um and so i was just thinking of people that I grew up watching that I love and I was also I'm always finding ways to incorporate my heritage into any of my projects and Rob's half Filipino oh that's mind-blowing I didn't know that yeah wow. his mom is from uh, Rob uh Schneider's half Filipino yeah he was talking to me in in Filipino and I was like Tagalog? yeah I was like you literally have a better accent than me <laughs> I, I was I was shocked. I didn't know he's Filipino at mm-hmm. all. I was I was shocked. Wow. But super super cool dude. Super so you laid told back. the video directors I want to get some actors in the video. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now if you don't mind me asking, did you have to pay them to come do it, or they did out of love? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it came with the package. I I'm not sure yeah, honestly yeah. because that was also when I was uh, distributed by Universal. Oh. So I. Got it. Early on in my career, I was like honestly straight up a puppet. That first record I ever released, I didn't write. They didn't let me. Yeah. I only started writing when I cut ties with them and. They didn't let you write? Mm hmm. And the, 
my for like the old producers that were handling the project, my former management. That's when I cut ties with them. That's when I had full creative control over my projects. Oh uh, wow! Mm-hmm. Wow! Wow! So wow. the first few releases, um, just my type, paint the town and swing batter. Do you not? Do you feel like those are kids you just don't love anymore? You know, like they were your kids, and now they're they're kind of in jail, and you're like, "Fuck these kids." Um, you know, yes and no. You know, looking back at it, like for me, the videos really made them like mean something to me. Yeah, they were big more than the records. Okay. Um, but I was talking to a good friend of mine, Addy, and he was like, "You know, you gotta find a way to like." Maybe like re-record it or mm, that ta- rewrite it. That Taylor Swift or, shit. Yeah, yeah, because you know, like, you never know like what can come out of it again. Absolutely, but I mean, you got like you're so young and you you all the time you're gonna create world. another fucking thousand. All of these. the time in the world, I'm only twenty three. Wow. And you were only 23. Yeah. Like, I would have hundred percent said you were 30, 32. Not not because of how you yourself or look just because your body of work and the way you move she has a website with the interviews tab that i was able to conveniently like scroll through and get blurts of your interviews before i clicked them Mm -hmm. wow 23 yeah wow wow wow. i have like seven years till i'm 30 yeah and and then then you're in your prime i just turned 30 okay i'm about to turn 31 that's a lie but turning 30 i'm in my prime I've never felt like this. I before. mean, one of my biggest inspirations is Snow Allegra. Really? And she just made it in yeah. her 30s. Shout out Snow Allegra. She is Persian. I'm from Afghanistan. Me and her speak the same language. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to meet her and give her a big hug. Mm-hmm. I cannot wait. Wow. That's, that's awesome. I love that you have that mindset. You definitely don't move like a 23-year-old. You don't sound like a 23-year-old. Thank you. You're, even just the context of your music is very immature. I- and that, like, literally, like, my listeners are 25 to 35. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's going to be so, you don't even have a TikTok account, huh? I feel like you're not I one do. of these people. Oh, Unfortunately. I love how you got negative. I do. I do. <laughs> I do. And you know what? It's, it's such a good resource for a it lot is. of people. It is. It is. But I, I don't post it with the intentions of me wanting to go viral. Yeah. I honestly just, just... And here's why. Because every video I post of me singing gets like zero engagement. Mm-hmm. But any video I post of my dog gets like a hundred times the engagement. Of course, of course. So I'm like, you know what, whatever. I'm just going to use TikTok as like, if you want to keep up with my life, here. Yeah, yeah. Here's me cooking or here's me putting on makeup yeah, you know with my dog driving. <laughs> exactly just, 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 exactly just it's, it's not it. like i really don't use it to promote my music at all i mean it's it's mm-hmm. tiktok to me you just create content and if i just if i hits. scroll i just love oh, it's so addicting i just I love watching i can't even open it anymore it's so addicting yeah like it's the most addicting app ever. i need to set a timer yeah before bed yeah. because i'll just it's mm-hmm. a, a rabbit hole. I'll watch four videos about some stupid side hustle, and then you end up like you're on Google, and then yeah. you're like, what the fuck just happened? Like, yeah. Oh. Last night, I ended up on an account where it posted all like the flight simulations of any flight that has crashed. And I was like, I don't really want to see this, but I'm very interested. Yeah, that's so cynical, but exciting. Share yeah. that with me later. I will. <laughs> yeah. I will. Sounds very exciting. <laughs> So, Tiana, Tiana Coker, mm-hmm. this whole interview I've been saying after I messed up that one time. Um, back It Up's out now. Yeah. We got Up To You, or no. Up To You. Mm-hmm. Up To You, Up To You coming out on the 29th. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to say, like, what's coming, what's coming, what's coming, but for Up To You, I have a feeling you have a visual coming with it. Yes. I just had a feeling. I didn't have any tip, I swear to God, but I'm like, the way you move, I know you had your so well planned out. I I have to. If it's not a music video, it's a lyric video or a visualizer. You know, there always just has to be some sort of visual with a record. Because let's be real, a lot of people consume with their eyes and not their ears. Mostly now. Or their mouths. Yeah. Because, and I'm 
I'm going to admit, like, I'll be in Trader Joe's. You know, I'll be in the wine section. I'm always going to pick the bottle that looks nicest. That doesn't necessarily mean what's inside is good. You know, so I know yeah. that having a visual is always just going to be like an added bonus Absolutely. for everyone's attention span in 2022. Yes. Uh, you can't <laughs> do it with just audio. Anymore. Yeah. Unless someone gets a, a cranberry juice bottle and skates in such an <laughs> right. ironic That's way. That's why like, I yeah. love what Spotify is doing now and like giving you the opportunity to even upload just clips of your visuals. Yeah. Like, I love that because like people are, are watching and listening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, plans, do you want to remain independent or no? I, I, I'm loving it. I'm loving having full creative control over my music and being able to release how many songs I want in a year. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to a label offering me a distribution deal. Or a pub deal, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. But a record deal is is not something that I'm like completely looking for at the moment. Okay. The reason yeah. I bring that up is you have superstar talent. Obviously, <laughs> you've had it. You know, and I watched your video. What What was the video for Marlon and Rob? Um, that was just my type. Just my type. Mm -hmm. There's that segment where you're on the bleachers dancing, mm -hmm. and I watch it. And I'm like, oh shit, she knows how to dance. Mm -hmm. At that point, I was like, she is probably Filipino. Yeah. And I did my more <laughs> research, and I'm like, yep, Vanilla. Yeah. But um, someone brought this up to me. Uh, one of my record label friends, or he works for a few labels, he brought up to me that the whole concept of a superstar that we've seen, like from The Weeknd to Bieber, back to Mariah Carey, has always been the machines doing. Like, you almost can't hit that level without the machine behind you mm -hmm. because they created that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's, it's, it's a level of superstardom that the machines really created. Mm -hmm. So I bring that up to an independent artist. Like, knowing that, because to me, independence is a way to go. This, Why would you ever? This may be controversial, what I'm okay. about to say. But I think that the only difference between me or just any independent artist compared to Dua Lipa or Lizzo, oh, okay, got it, got it. Lizzo got it. or uh, just, you know, any, like, those kinds of artists is not the talent, it's the budget. Yeah. And that's what the majors give you. They, cause yeah. Otherwise, as an independent, even if you have 20 mil to put into your album, you're putting 20 mil out of your pocket mm -hmm. into your album, mm -hmm. and you have to wait to recoup it. Mm -hmm. Whereas the label is like, hey, we'll put the 20 mil up. We're going to take back 25 mil on the back end, but we'll mm -hmm. give you that to work with now. That's why I bring it up, because you have not every artist has superstar potential or mm -hmm. talent. You definitely have it. And so I, I, I wonder if that's something you think about. Like, am I holding myself back? Because I'm fully for being independent. There's no one I admire more than it independent artists from you to g perico my favorite rapper out to fucking my homegirl lexi pantera like i just love mm -hmm. in, in, independent mm -hmm. artists and your grind but when that dude told me that i'm like oh shit i can't think of one independent artist who's really reached that level i'm trying mm -hmm. to think like prince you know prince but he had to go through the system to get there yeah so that's why i bring that up i really think you are one of the artists who will break the mold Thank I think you. slowly we're going to see it. I received that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You are going to break the mold because you move like a major. Up until my research, I kept looking for your label. I Google searched it a few times, like mm -hmm. Tiana Coker label. And mm -hmm. I'm like, there's nothing coming up. Mm -hmm. So you move like a major. And so it hasn't slowed you down or stopped your ability to do anything. So I'm a big fan. Thank you. Tiana, thank you for the music. Thank you for, I'm, I'm going to thank you for up to you and I haven't even heard it. Ah. Maybe I'll play it. Hey. Maybe well, I will. Outside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, look, I'm going to be following your journey. Um, and I, I do have to shout out someone from your team. Yeah. I, I, I can't go it. through this. <clears throat> shout out Brandon, right? Absolutely. I'm saying it right. Because he knows Brandon and Brandon. I'm saying it right. Brandon with an A. Mm -hmm. So the reason, well, Tiana, your music's so great. If I just wouldn't have been a dumbass and would have like clicked on your name and listened, I would have been like, oh, shit, I got to speak to her. But uh, her manager, manager, right, mm -hmm. Re reached out to me via DM. I didn't open it. And Brandon, this dude walked up to me at EDC Vegas, just showed me love, said I really love what Dash is doing. I have some DMs. If you get a chance to open them, I'm manager artist. She's really dope. I still ignored it like an idiot. 
he saw me again and the consistency the persistence of just like same thing the key is uh your manager was really polite and kind to the point where i'm like why am i being a dick let me check his artist out open the dm and i'm like wow i'm an idiot i told him immediately i'm like listen dog like my bad so having a great team around you is really important because I would yeah. have been ignoring your music like an asshole I am. Mm -hmm. And it took somebody from your team to just, like shake me for a second. Yeah. Like, Yo, dog, just listen. For real. And, and, you know, I'm very blessed to be working with him. Shout out, Brandon. Really, and your I whole really team. Am. Everyone. Oh, yeah. my gosh. It, it's, it's everything. Because, you know, I, I've had to deal with, even if the artist is nice, but I've had to deal with a really awful manager, I'm not going to want to work with the artist anymore. Absolutely. And I don't know why they do that. And I don't know why certain managers do that and potentially kill like the their artist's career. Like, yeah. like I, I'm a firm believer. I said it earlier. I'm, you know, you're, you're guilty by association. So I really pick and choose who I have around me. And if I know that they're not going to represent me well, bye. I love that. Because we're all an extension of each other. Absolutely. If he would have approached me or anyone from your team and was a dickhead, I would have immediately, I would have been a cloud over Respectfully. your Respectfully. Bye. Yeah, I, I, I would have saw I your name and been like, oh, understand. she's the one with the dickhead manager. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you have an incredible team around you. Is there anyone I'm else you want to shout out before we wrap from your team? I mean, all of them are amazing. You know, uh, Brendan, Paige, Tim, Nathan, Ulysses, uh, Devin, even my makeup artist and my hair <laughs> hairstylist, they're amazing. They've been with me for so long. I have such amazing, loyal people around me. And of course, my mom, my Shout dad, out Katrina. my family. Well, I, I honestly think it's mm -hmm. all a reflection of you. Because when I look at anyone, anyone you mentioned, Ulysses, which was the name that just stood out, <laughs> from Ulysses to Brandon to Paige, mm -hmm. if they didn't believe in you, um, and even just me having gotten to meet you, you're incredible. You're very honest. Like you're, I'm, I'm really excited to see what this, you know, the rest of 2022, 2023, and the future holds for Thank Tiana you. Coker. <laughs> I made sure I had it right. Every time I say your first name, I'm like Coke. Coker. Mm -hmm. um, well, Tiana, thank you so much. Dash thank takes a me. lot of pride in uh, talking to artists before it's too late. That makes sense. Mm. So we had Billie Eilish's first radio interview. Just got taken down off YouTube. We got to figure that out. What? Yeah, I don't know why. But we had her first radio why interview. Why is that? Post Malone's first radio interview. Kehlani's first radio interview. Speaking of Kehlani. What about her? She's incredible. Oh, yeah. I, I, I had the chance to meet her uh, two years ago, pre-pandemic at BeautyCon. And... I was floored. Because you know how people are, are always like, never meet your heroes? Because it could ruin it, yeah. But I'm like, nah. You put her up there as a hero. Yeah, oh yeah. I love it. Oh yeah. She has the R&B record of the year. Up all night, up at night, up all night, up at night, up at night, up at night. With Bieber, R&B mm -hmm. record. No disrespect to your records or anyone else's records. That Kehlani. And you know She's... what? I had the, the privilege of knowing her well before she blew up. Right before Cloud 19 dropped, one of my friends was dating her. And so I got to just be around. She, we, we would kick it all the time. Mm -hmm. She used to text me to check on him. When they broke up, he lived at my house for a month. She mm -hmm. would text me, like, how is, like, say, how, how is he doing? That's so sweet. I'm going to tell you something. Really she really is so sweet. She was that sweet back then. She was the ultimate sweetheart. She had this little ghetto apartment that Nick, uh, Nick Cannon had her up in somewhere in the valley. Little ghetto apartment, no furniture, and she was a sweetheart. Like yep. so, and still is. Shout out to still shout is. Shout out to Bay Lonnie, as we yep. like to say. Shout out yep. to the Bay. Well, Tiana, there's gonna be a singer soon doing an interview saying the same thing about you. So keep that energy because someone's gonna meet you one day. Thank you. And and they're gonna be Thank like, you. oh my god. So I met Tiana and she's an angel. Thank and then I'm gonna confirm it. I'm gonna be like, man. So I met her before y'all even knew. Ah. <laughs> Uh, Tiana, thank you so much. Of course, um, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Dash Radio is honored to have you here. You can hear Happy Tiana's music on Dash Discover. It's going to be on Dash X, R and B X for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you. It might it might break over to Dash Dance. Get a little absolutely, dance section. absolutely, absolutely. Tiana, thank you so much. They can find you online at just Tiana Coker, right? Yeah, thankfully I I have a name that nobody else has. So you know when I was making my usernames, you know. 
I, I had first dibs everywhere. Easy to get. So it's literally Tiana Coker everywhere. That's K O C H E R uh, on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. Everywhere, like, Apple literally Music. everywhere. So, yeah. Everywhere. Tiana, thank you so much. Yeah. Everybody, this was my wand. You can go listen to Back It Up right now. Mm -hmm. And right after this interview drops, you got another one coming soon. So, mm -hmm. up to you. I'm very excited to hear it. Yeah. Tiana, thank you so thank much. You. Enjoy the Brandy album. I will. As you should. I absolutely will. You deserve that one. Thank you. You deserve that. All right, everybody, we're out. So I, I was going to give you like a, a modern R&B album. And I'm like, oh, no. Let me just get stuff on those. I was mm -hmm. like, no. Absolutely not. Sorry, I went a little over. The interview went a little long. I, 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 I,